Hi, welcome back. In this video, we will see how we can externalize the Hive Meta Store as well as the storage of to GCS. So first, we will head over to the SQL. Now, what we're going to do is that we will create a MySQL database, a MySQL instance using Google Cloud SQL. So we'll hit on create instance. We will choose MySQL. So Google Cloud SQL is a managed uh, service by managed SQL service by Google. So we're going to do that. Then I would say that no password. After that, I would choose the MySQL version 5.7. The region would be US Central 1. Just make sure that your region for MySQL and data proc is the same so that you know there is less latency in there. I would say I just want it in the single zone. For production services, you should have it in multiple zone, but that's all right. We're doing a demo. It says primary zone. Any can be done. We will not touch any of the customization. Now I hit on create instances. I'll wait on this page and I'll come back when the instance is created. Now the instance is up. Next, what we're going to do is that we're going to create a data prop cluster. So this cluster needs some changes, right? So there are two things that you need to remember that uh, if you go down here, you will see that we have expended four CPUs out of the total eight that we have uh, for our free account. So we will be using one less worker in the configuration. And the second is that uh, we need to tell our data proc cluster where our Hive Meta Store is or where our Cloud SQL proxy instance is so that it can use that instance to initialize the Hive Meta Store rather than initializing a Hive Meta Store on the cluster. So we will say shared cluster we will say we're just naming it uh, whatever is coming up so we will choose the same version that we have been choosing no component gateway we will say configure nodes we will use in standard two we will use only one worker instead of two because uh, we have okay so it says they must be two or more so what I'm going to do is that I will say a single node cluster and I will do a in one standard too that should do my job because anyway we do not have a very big job to run it's just uh, that we're getting dipping our toes in this is done nodes have been configured we will come to customize cluster now this is where the fun begins so now data proc or for that matter, GCP has a service, a managed service for data proc meta store, which you can see here. It says uh, it's it's still in beta. So we will cover that as well in the upcoming videos. But right now what we are covering is the older way to do it. Uh, I should not call it older way. Like it's a generally available way to do it. The data proc meta store service is still in beta, uh, but it's kind of the same thing. So. Here we have two things, which is one is the initialization action. So initialization actions are scripts which run on the start of uh, the cluster creation and which can customize the behavior of your class uh, of your machines, which can customize the state of your machines. So if you Google cloud data proc initialization actions, you will land on this GitHub repository, which is owned by Google. And we have lots and lots of customization actions in here. You will come down to Cloud SQL Proxy. Here you will find the details how we can use Cloud SQL Proxy to connect to our Hive Meta Store. So Cloud SQL Proxy is an instance, is a service running on uh, the node of your data proc clusters VM, which will allow Hive, which will allow outbound connections to the SQL or MySQL database that's running in the Cloud SQL service. So for that, we need to add an initialization action script. The URL is given here. So we'll copy it off from here and we will put it here. Control C, Control V. It says uh, it has a moniker, which is the region. So I will tell the region in which I am running. I will take the region of my SQL account. I yeah, so it's US Central 1. I will type it out. 
CES Central 1. Oops, there's a typo. US Central 1. It still says that I do not get it, which is fine because we have a GS prefix there. We have to remove it. So we have the initialization done there. The next one is that we have to add some properties. So the property is Hive Metastore Warehouse. So we will choose the prefix here, which is Hive. The key is Hive dot well, I forgot what was that hive.metastore.warehouse.dir. I'll just copy it off from here. Easier to easier that way. Right. And the value is any bucket location. So I would copy this. We have only one bucket which goes by our project ID. So I will replace the bucket key by that. Yeah, so that is that. Now we have third. And the final thing to do is that we have to add one metadata key and property, which is Hive Meta Store instance. Via this, I am telling the cluster or the initialization script to go and connect to this Hive Meta Store. You can copy the connection name from here, put it as a value, and that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll trigger the cluster creation. So here in the cluster console we see that the cluster is in the provisioning state we will open the configuration page uh, and we will see what all configuration we have we have only one vm instance the master only since that's the kind of architecture we have for this uh, this cluster we will see what all things we have added so we have added a metadata high meta store there it is so this is project id this is region this is the name of the sql instance then we have added a initialization action. This is nothing but a shell script which gets executed uh, while the data proc service is configuring our VMs in our cluster. And the third one is that we added a property. So there are a lot of properties which get added by default. We added this one right here to tell where the Hive Meta Store is. So uh, I'll be pausing the video and I'll come back when my cluster is in running state. So before uh, creating the cluster, you would also need to enable the admin API. What you can do is uh, you can go to the API section or you can write SQL. You can go to the search on the top and write SQL admin API. And you can click that and it says manage for me it says api enable for me but you will have an enable button there click on the button and it should be enabled my cluster is in running state so what i'm going to do is that i will submit my first job in which i was writing a hive table uh, and then we'll see what happens but before that uh, hive meta store is still not configured there is no database configured to write to gcs still the default database which comes with hive is uh, configured to write to the hdfs so what we are going to do is that we will first create a database which will write which we will configure to write to gcs so we will say hive configure gcs database uh, the location will be the same, the job will be shared cluster, the query, the job type will be hive, the query text would be create database, I will say shared GCS and I would say the location of the database would be the GS and then the bucket name, I'm going to be extra cautious this time and then I would say shared GCS location uh continue on failure yes so this is a one-time activity you do not have to do it again and again since the hive meta store will be persisted even when the cluster is deleted this database the database by the name shared underscore gcs will persist uh, beyond the life of the cluster so i'll submit this and i will wait for this job to complete and in the meantime what i'll do is that i'll make changes to my spark driver so i was writing to the default database but now i will write to the shared gcs database so that it writes to gcs 
I will copy this off to my bucket. I will update the script on my bucket. Voila. So we have our database created. I have already changed my Spark job to reflect the same. So now instead of writing to the default database, I'll be writing to the shared GCS database. And I have uploaded this to the bucket. So the next step that remains is that I will submit a job which will say create create table in shared meta store. I would prefix or suffix it by one just in case I have to run it again. I will say it's a PySpark job. The main fi Python file would be something of the sort which will say spark write demo dot py. So that is it. I would still say, so I do not have to change anything in the job properties. There is nothing that I have to do because all of this is done for you. All of this is configured for you when we created the database. Uh, the only property I would be using is the spark submit dot deploy mode, which we always do and set to the client. And that is pretty much it. So this should run uh, and we should have our data in our bucket. We will see that we will have the uh, folder which, yeah, so here it is shared GCS. We have a folder there already, uh, which is our database. We have this job submitted and uh, in, in no time we should have the data as well here we should have a folder by the table name which is random underscore numbers the yeah so it says storing random numbers in a table it is a matter of a couple of seconds more before we see the data here and we do see it says connected to the meta store and a lot of other uh, logs which shows that it is trying to write to high table and it says complete and rightfully so you see that it wrote the data onto the gcs in the shared cluster folder it created another folder by the name of the table name which is random numbers and you see the parquet file there so now the beauty of this entire setup is that even if now i delete the cluster my meta store lives because the hive sql instance is separate so uh the cloud sql instance is separate from the cluster and this data is stored on the GCS. However, the one thing to note is that you will have to keep your SQL instance running up and running, but that's a very small cost. It's just one instance, few vehicles, as opposed to a huge cluster of, let's say, 100 VMs or 20 VMs or 30 odd VMs. Uh, so the cost implication is high if you keep the cluster running versus if you just keep the meta store running and also with this setup what we have done is that we have written the data off to gcs which is much more available and much more durable than the storage on the vms themselves so as you can so this is the setup that we have uh with this, we have achieved the complete isolation of compute and storage. Our storage is completely off the compute machines, uh, off the cluster, which means that now we can safely delete our cluster without losing any data. And now our cluster is solely there for the purpose of uh, doing the computation. There is no storage there however one thing to note is that we have inverted the data locality principle on which spark or MapReduce uh, or any other distributed data processing framework relies that you know you send the computation to the data rather than bringing data from the computation but with the advancement in the network speeds uh, copying the data off from the GCS buckets to the cluster is a very less, is a very small penalty that, or is a very small cost that we incur, uh, as opposed to the kind of availability and durability guarantees that we get.